Today on Q&A Mondays, we discuss hydrostatic versus hydrokinetic and what makes up the requirements for each type of system. What's up, guys? I'm Thad Barnett from Sheffield Metals, and welcome back to Q&A Mondays. Hydrostatic versus hydrokinetic. What do they mean, and how do they affect your roof? To help answer that question, today I've got Jeff Hawk, Adam Mazzella, and Julianne Kalpa on the show today, ready to share some knowledge. And in the description, there's quick links to jump ahead to any of the questions we talk about, so definitely check those out. So thanks for being on the show today, guys. Um, Let's start with the definitions of hydrostatic and hydrokinetic and kind of how they relate to each other. A hydrostatic roof system is basically designed to shed water um, versus a hydrostatic roof system, which is going to shed water, but it's going to shed water a lot more slowly. Um, The panels might become submerged at times, and the water might be able to back up onto the roof system. So that's the definition between hydrokinetic and hydrostatic, and what's going to affect that is going to be the pitch of your roof system. So what slopes determine if it's hydrostatic or hydrokinetic? So typically a hydrostatic system is something that's going to be 312 or less, and a hydrokinetic system is going to be a system that's a 312 or more. So beyond the slope, what panels for Sheffield will make up a hydrostatic system versus hydrokinetic system? So I guess the the easy way to quantify it is your snap locks are typically going to be uh, hydrokinetic systems. Those are going to be steeper slope water shedding quickly, your hydrostatic systems are going to be more of the mechanical locks, the lower slope applications, things that, uh, you know, you're going to do a double fold and oftentimes have sealant on the seams, okay. especially at lower slopes. Right. Your hydrostatic systems can also be used in hydrokinetic applications, as in steeper roof pitches. You don't want to go the reverse, though, and use a hydrokinetic roof system in a lower slope hydrostatic situation. Hi, Jeff. You know, that that brings up a good point because your typical hydrostatic system, you know, is is tested in accordance with ASTM E2140 for a low slope water submersion application. Um, And your steep slope is typically tested with an ASTM E1646, which is more of a steeper slope wind driven rain. And they really aren't interchangeable. But Oftentimes they're specified as being interchangeable and they and oftentimes they're really not applicable in a specification. So if a low slope is specified with an ASTM E1646, they should probably be asking for the ASTM E2140 and vice versa. So the difference between ASTM E2140 and ASTM E1646 is, I'll try to put it in layman's terms, uh, ASTM E2140 I've always kind of looked at it as like a bathtub test. So you take the panel system and you submerge it under six inches of water over, what, six hours, I think, Jeff, right? Six hours. So six hours, and if there's one drop of water, it fails. So you're certainly not going to pass that with a snap lock, um, you're really only going to be able to pass out with a double folded mechanical seam with sealant in the seams. 1646 uh, conversely has basically a, a little bit of water on a uh, metal roof system and they pry, apply air pressure, water pressure to the system. Again, similar to the 2140, if there's any water that penetrates the system, it constitutes as a fail. Um, certainly not as strenuous as a 2140, but again, it's it's a, a in-depth test where they're testing water leakage through the system. Okay, so what are the requirements for each type of roof system? So for a hydrostatic system, you know, the one of the requirements is going to be you're always going to have sealant in the seam. It's always going to be a double locked or 180 degree seam mechanical seam panel. And that's usually specific to a lower slope. Now, uh, the dual side of that, or the other side of that, is oftentimes it's specified to have a hydrostatic system, steeper slope. Um, we're of the opinion that a hydrokinetic system will work just as, just as well uh, for a steeper slope application in that type of uh, scenario. And really, the, there is no net gain from it. You're, you're adding additional labor. Uh, additional materials because uh, you have sealant in the seam and, and just driving the cost of the project up. Now, uh, conversely, requirements for a hydrokinetic system, uh, it, it really boils down to the slope. Um, 
you do not want to have a hydrokinetic design in a low slope application. Uh, where hydrokinetic designs work great, steep slope, uh, you know, when there's not, you know, dead valleys, when there's not situations that are going to cause the water to back up the system, mm -hmm. it's a great system design. You're always going to want to check with your manufacturer to determine what they allow and what condition. Um, there could be slope requirements. Just because it's a hydrostatic roof panel doesn't mean it can necessarily meet the roof slope of the building that you're working on. Um, some manufacturers might allow a panel to go down to a half 12. Some panels might only be allowed to go down to a 112. Uh, it's based on the configuration of the panel and what the manufacturer feels comfortable with recommending. Uh, other things to think about too are the design of your roof. How long are your panel runs? Um, is there water coming from a roof above it that is going to be dumping on down to a lower roof section? Uh, there's things with the design to keep in mind when you're talking about hydrostatic roof systems and which panel to choose when you're dealing with one of those systems. So another thing is that no matter which system you're using, whether it's hydrokinetic or hydrostatic, is that we always recommend using an underlayment underneath your metal panel system. Um, if anything is to infiltrate your roof system, you have a secondary protection and if nothing else, it keeps your decking dry while uh, you're waiting for the roof system to be installed. Uh, the only time a underlayment wouldn't be necessary is if you're dealing with a open framing situation. And in those cases, we always recommend sealing the steams and to treat every open framing application as it's a hydrostatic roof system. Well, I think that about wraps us up here, guys. So I appreciate all the information. I think we learned a lot. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Stay in the loop for future videos. Comment below with any questions you have. Check us out on Sheffield Metals Online, and uh, we'll catch you next time.